In this video, we're going to discuss subcutaneous and intradermal closure using a horizontal Cushing's pattern with buried knots. Let's first start by discussing what instrumentation we're going to use. So when doing subcutaneous and intradermal skin closure, it's important that we use absorbable suture. For subcutaneous tissue, we can use chromic gut, or like we're going to do today, as we would out in the shelter medicine and surgery rotation, we'll be using a long-acting monofilament absorbable suture. Um, size 4 ot is what we'll be using, brand PDO on a cutting needle. We have a couple different instruments that we can use um, when we're handling tissue. Our rat tooth forceps, which are commonly called our Adson forceps. We then have our brown Adson forceps that have a smaller area here with teeth that are slightly smaller, um, less traumatic, but has a little bit more of a crush to them. And then the most gentle of all, the DeBakey forceps, designed for bowel handling originally, has small teeth spaced longer along the length of the forcep. So with an overhand grip in my dominant hand, I'm going to spread the skin to tense it up with my non-dominant hand and make, make a nice perpendicular cut. My blade will not come off the skin, my left non-dominant hand will move keep the tension. And then I switch to a pencil grip to fully make sure my sub Q is cut, especially at the ends, because that's where we need that nice cut tissue so we can bury our knots more effectively. When using your suture, the packs, the needle always comes at one end of the pack. Oftentimes there's a little triangle that you can fold over, grab your needle and set it. And then important not to just pull your suture out. You wanna make sure that you're controlling it so it doesn't fly out of your sterile field. The way I tend to do this is I'll use my three fingers and I'll wrap the suture around it. To get rid of the memory in the suture, I'll then gently pull and stretch it so it lays out a little more flat and not all curly cued. Since an intradermal closure is not a holding layer, an additional way to start this is by using a subcutaneous buried knot. With all buried knots, we'll start on the near side, deep to superficial, or DSN, deep to superficial near, and then the far side, superficial to deep far. Making sure that both of our suture ends are coming out into the remainder of our incision. We'll then tie a square knot with four throws, putting tension along the length of the suture or parallel to the incision line in order to have the knot very deeper in the subcutaneous tissue. Struggle bus. We'll then cut the tag short. And now we're going to do what I call a reverse smurf. We're going to engage our needle in our needle holders backwards, so pointing towards the beginning of the incision, like so. Then I'm going to pull up on the suture and pass the needle under the knot and come up just behind the knot through the sub tissue at the end of the incision, or the beginning of the incision. The next step is to start 
our intradermal closure at the very end, or what I call the apex of the incision. The first two bites we're going to choke up on our needle to about half the length and do two small, exactly identical bites. I'll usually start on the far side and then I'm going to go back 100% overlap on the near side in order to pull those skin edges together over the buried knot. Afterwards we can start our normal pattern of intradermal. You'll notice here I'm gently grabbing the skin, being very careful not to crush the skin. And I recommend using rat tooth forceps, like plastic surgeons do, or DeBakey tissue forceps, which we have also out in the shelter in our surgery packs there. At this point we just start our normal intradermal bites as you learned in intro to surgery. For ending the intradermal knot, we're then going to enter into our buried sequence. Our last horizontal bite is on the near side. Be sure to pull this loop away so you don't get confused and tie to the wrong loop. Next we'll go superficial to deep far. I gently lift up the skin and I'll invert to make it more ergonomic when passing the needle superficially through the cut edge of the dermis and into the sub Q. So SDF far. Pull this loop through. I'll then do the opposite on the near side, deep to superficial near, starting in the sub-Q, inverting the skin and coming out the cut intradermal skin edge. This loop is the one we save, because we have two deep ends. The next thing I do is pull the suture cranially or to my left to my non-dominant side so that I don't get tangled in it when doing this last superficial to deep bite. As you'll notice, my forceps hold that loop out of the way and then I pull the trunk of the intradermal buried sequence up right through the middle of the two loops. So there you have it, the elephant with the two. So an alternative to a square knot, we're going to be using an Aberdeen knot in order to close our intradermal buried knot. This is a smaller and stronger knot than the square knot, which will make it easier to bury. With the save loop, we have two strands. First, the floss strand, which is connected to the end of the suture. And the second is the tightening strand. This strand is connected to the rest of the pre-placed intradermal suture line, and when pulled, will tighten that suture line along the length of the incision. So that will tighten it up. So you'll take two fingers, grab the suture from the other side, still hold it with your non-dominant hand, pull through. Now this top one is the floss strand. This is the one that is attached to the rest of the suture line. And when I pull on this one, this loop will go down. So I'm leaving this top floss strand nice and loose just to where it goes down to the skin. You don't want to pull too hard because since it's attached to this, it will accordion your incision since it is a continuous pattern and there's not much friction on these monofilament suture lines. Now, you'll do it again. Pulling the bottom one. This one you can pull up a little more and you'll feel a little pop. I think you could even probably see it there in this video. And now you could do that for days making this daisy chain 
thing until you make a really nice, cool friendship bracelet. But for our suture pattern today, the intradermal, we just need to do it twice. And then on the third one, grab it, let go with your non-dominant hand, and pull the needle all the way through your loop. And then pull straight up. And that locks your knot into place. So what you'll notice is it's a much smaller knot than your square knot. When I pull up on this, it can't turn into a slip knot, so there's only one way, and actually pulling up on this makes it tighter. And since it's a smaller knot and a stronger knot than a square knot, it being a smaller knot really helps to make this smurf in a derm intradermal pattern a lot easier. Push down on the skin so you can see your needle or see your needle in your knot, right side of my knot. Way in the way. Find that sweet spot. Bounce it. And I can't see my knot anymore. When you cut this, do not pull up on it. Just leave it down, cut it next to the skin. You actually want the tag to be a little longer because the way it locked into place was by going through that last loop. Leaving a little longer of a tag will ensure that it doesn't find its way back through that loop and it won't untie. You can also do this on any other type of continuous pattern. Um, if you're doing it on a holding pattern, such as the rectus fascia, um, which you can do potentially in your fourth year, um, or once you get out into practice, um, you will do four daisy chain loops and on the fifth one, pull the needle through. Cool. Yeah, All right.